Coming up on today's episode of Full Sail Live Sports Update. The Los Angeles Lakers have suffered back-to-back home losses. How long will it take for the Lakers to come together and play to their potential? Then, the Denver Broncos have now lost four games straight. Is it too late for the Broncos to turn this season around? Finally, Vic Fangio is on the hot seat. Should the Broncos fire Fangio? Tap in Full Sail Live Sports Update starts now. What's up, sports fans? Welcome to another episode of Full Sail Live Sports Update. I'm Travis Rose. I'm at Los Angeles at the Staples Center, where the Los Angeles Lakers just lost back-to-back home games to start the 2021 season. Their season-opening loss to the Golden State Warriors was ugly. Although it's only their second game together, it counts, and they're dealing with multiple injuries while trying to build team chemistry. Let's head out to L.A. for the highlights. LeBron James is known for figuring out a system that best works for his team. Will this year be any different? Game two of the season, going up against Chris Paul and the Phoenix Suns. Early first quarter, Westbrook came out aggressive in his second home game as a Laker. Eight points on three for six shooting in the first quarter. Westbrook dribbles down and hits Devin Booker with a post-up fadeaway. Suns ball. Nice ball move. Jay Crowder for the corner three. That's a miss. Laker ball. Westbrook throws it all the way up the court to an open LeBron James who switches it for the three-pointer. The Lakers finally started to come together when a verbal disagreement turned physical on the bench between Anthony Davis and Dwight Howard. Third quarter, the Suns will start to take over and dominate the second half, led by Devin Booker with 22 points. The Lakers will bring the game within 10 points, but it was a little too late. Final, 105-115. We caught up with veteran LeBron James after the game. Um, But there's a process along with uh, building something to become the team that you want to become. And... uh, and I know it firsthand. Um, I know, you know, the shortcomings that happens throughout when you're trying to build something special. And, you know, it doesn't happen overnight. As much as you want it, you're going to get frustrated at times because you know what you're capable of. You know what the team can become capable of. But it just takes time. And um, we'll know um, when that time is. But right now, we got to just continue just to push. Still to come on Full Sail Live. The Denver Broncos have dug themselves into a hole. Is it too late for the Broncos to turn the season around? Stay tuned. Welcome back to Full Sail Live. I'm just outside of First Energy Stadium where the Denver Broncos just played their first nationally televised game of the season. Nationally televised game or not, the Broncos troubles did not end here in Cleveland. Let's take a look at the highlights where the Browns have taken advantage of the run game. As third-screen running back, Dearness Johnson takes it in for a touchdown on first and goal. Starting at quarterback, second-screen Case Keenum dials back and hits Jarvis Landry, juggling the ball, but somehow comes down with it. Bridgewater dials back and throws to Cortland Sutton down the sideline, a one-handed catch for a big game. Next play. Teddy Bridgewater dials back to the end zone and is picked off. Browns ball. Third and goal. Bridgewater finds an open Melvin Gordon coming out the backfield. We have a ball game. Browns lead 10-7. Late third quarter, Case Keenum finds an open Stanton creeping in the end zone. Fourth quarter, Broncos ball. Teddy Bridgewater finds Pookie Williams on the screen. And the Broncos tack on seven or more, but eventually fall to the Cleveland Browns, 17-14. The Broncos' defense continues to be hammered with injuries, while the offense continues to struggle to move the ball. We caught up with Broncos quarterback Teddy Bridgewater after the game. It sucks. Um, just want to get this thing turned around. Let me get a couple days off, man, get some guys healthy, and um, try to do it again in 10 days. Um, Obviously, we got to start better. Um, 
We got to stay on the, on the field. We can do a better job of staying on the field. And um, we just can't wait to the second half. It's now time for a part in the show we like to call Hot Seat Action. Broncos head coach Vic Panningo is on the hot seat after losing four games straight after starting the season 3-0, thanks in large part to facing three easy opponents. The team's offensive struggles do not necessarily fall squarely on Fanigo, but the Broncos are 12-20 since Fanigo joined the team two and a half years ago. Here's what Fanigo had to say about the Broncos' struggles this season. What's most concerning is our fundamentals are lacking, and when that's lacking, that's poor coaching on our part, and that starts with me. Well, Mr. Faningo, you are right about that. In my opinion, Faningo is a great defensive mind coach, but it hasn't translated to on-field results in Denver, at least in the past four games. Against the Cleveland Browns on Thursday, Denver allowed third-screen running back Dearness Johnson to rush for 146 yards and a touchdown. I caught up with head coach Vic Faningo after the game Thursday. This is very disappointing. Um, you know, you look at the final score and you're going to 17-14 and you're going to think, well, 17 points is good enough defensively. But we, we didn't play good defense tonight. We let them drive it too much, uh, way too many third and ones. And uh, we just we didn't play well enough to win the game. The Denver Broncos' next four games consist of Washington, Dallas, Philadelphia, then a bye week. The Broncos have a 67.9% chance to defeat Washington football team. Well, folks, that wraps up the show for today. I want to thank you all for tuning in. And remember to tune in next week as we discuss Broncos versus Washington and the Los Angeles Lakers season so far. Until next time.